Lavrov says Moscow and Washington have agreed on setting no preconditions for the convention of the Geneva II International Conference on Syria. The army advances along Khorin Mahin axis preliminary to eliminating terrorists in the village. Two Palestinians are killed, one by an Israeli occupation soldier's bullet and the other as a result of medical negligence in Israel jails. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year according to the Islamic calendar. The preparatory meetings for the International Conference on Syria opened in Geneva today. The Russian delegation comprising Deputy Foreign Ministers Gennady Gatilov and Mikhail Bogdanov met the American delegation headed by the American Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Wendy Sherman. Today's meeting is held preliminary to a tripartite meeting to be held later and is due to include the UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, and representatives of three other permanent member states at the UN Security Council, namely China, France and Britain. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said his country and Washington have agreed that no preconditions are to be set for the convention of the International Geneva II Conference on Syria and that the objective is the implementation of Geneva I. In a joint press conference with his New Zealand's counterpart Murray McCauley, Lavrov said the conditions put by the Doha coalition to attend the conference are strange because they contravene the Geneva statement issued in June last year. He said the Doha coalition enjoyed no support when it was established and has been increasingly marginalized with influence moving to other sides of the opposition. Lavrov was astonished at the Doha coalition's demand for excluding Iran from attending Geneva too. He stressed the need to call on all foreign sides capable of influencing influencing the situation in Syria to attend the conference including all Syria's neighbors and all Gulf states and Iran as well as Turkey and the UN Security Council's permanent member countries. China has called on all concerned parties to exert bigger efforts for the convention of the Geneva II International Conference on Syria as soon as possible, affirming that the political solution is the only way to end the crisis. China's permanent representative to the UN Security Council, Leo Ji Yi, said in a press conference at the UN held on the Council's work program for this month, that holding the international conference on Syria early will serve the interest of the Syrian people and the region. He affirmed that his country will continue to work in order to convince all concerned parties to head to the table of negotiations without preconditions and to delineate Syria's political future through negotiations and dialogue. On its part, Iran has reiterated support for the activities aimed at finding a peaceful solution to the crisis in Syria. Iranian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mardeya Afham said in her weekly press conference that her country rejected any preconditions set for its presence at the Geneva II International Conference on Syria. Iran has so far received no official invitation to attend the conference, she said. She added that UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was paving the way for the convention of the conference and that the UN envoy al Akhtar al-Brahimi's visit to the region came within this framework. She pointed out that the crisis in Syria was heading towards a solution. Welcome back. One citizen was killed and another injured in a terrorist attack with a mortar shell that fell on Midhat Pasha Souk in Damascus today. The shell fell on a clothes factory inflicting material damage on the place and nearby cars. A mortar shell had also fallen at the Vatican Embassy in Damascus this morning, leaving no casualties.
In Damascus Damascus suburbs, a Syrian Arab army unit has seized a car loaded with RPG shells and stolen medical equipment and captured the terrorist that was driving it in Wadi Barada in Damascus suburbs. Another army unit eliminated terrorist gangs on Asin Palmyra Road, destroying a car loaded with missiles and ammunition. The Syrian army also targeted terrorist gatherings in Asaki farms north of an -Nabik. The army destroyed a terrorist hideout that contained medicines and stolen medical equipment in Yabrud. It captured several terrorists, among whom Samir and Ahmed Matouk were identified. On the ground, Syrian Arab army advances on the two axes of Hurin Mahin, paving the way for the elimination of the armed terrorist groups who call themselves the Strangers Battalion and are based in the village. The Syrian Arab army units continue to successfully advance toward Mahin, fighting on more than one axis to clamp down on the terrorist groups. The army units also continue pursuing the terrorists through the hills overlooking Mahin, killing many terrorists and destroying a number of their vehicles. In Mahin, Syrian Arab army repelled a terrorist attempt to attack military posts in the area and the surrounding mountains. The army also destroyed terrorist hideouts north of Al Dwer Crossroad in the areas of Adar al Kabira and northeast of Mahmoud Mosque, as well as in Al Balor restaurant in Al Rastan, eliminating all the terrorists there. Meanwhile, a boat was destroyed, including a variety of ammunition and terrorists who were trying to sneak into Al Hula across the lake of Arrestan. An armed terrorist group was also eliminated in Khalij Kisin in the area of Arrestan. In the city of Homs, the Syrian army completely eliminated a terrorist group, killing many terrorists and injuring others in the vicinity of Al Amal Hospital in Jurat al Shayyah, destroying their weapons. The competent authorities, in cooperation with the residents in the city of Hama, seized large quantities of weapons and ammunition, including the Israeli-made Lao missiles in the mosque of Al-Ashqar in Jurat Hawa neighborhood, and arrested a wanted terrorist. A military source said that information was received from the citizens in Jurat Hawa neighborhood in the city of Hama about the presence of an armed terrorist group near the mosque of Al-Ashqar. The Syrian Arab army forces raided the place and arrested one of the gunmen. While searching the mosque, a range of weapons were found, including eight automatic rifles, heat rocket and a rocket-propelled gun. The weapons were found in a secret cache inside the mosque. Also, two explosive devices, each weighing about 25 kilograms, were found hidden under tiles in the courtyard of the mosque. The military forces also found medicine, military uniforms and ammunition hidden in a refrigerator inside the mosque. Finally, the Palestinian prisoner Hassan Abdel Halim al Turabi from Nablus in the West Bank was killed in the Israeli jails as a result of medical negligence. The Minister of Prisoners Affairs, Isa Qaraqia, said that a Turabi who was detained in Israeli jails since 10 months had suffered internal bleeding and he was carried to the hospital of Al Afula where he died. Qaraqia blamed the occupation forces and held them as fully responsible for at turabis death, saying that at turabis death came as a result of deliberate negligence of his death after suffering leukemia years ago. Another Palestinian young man was also killed in the refugee camp of Shafhat, northeast of occupied Jerusalem, of wounds sustained during clashes with Israeli occupation forces at Al-Aqsa Mosque. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to the latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Interior Ministry has reported capturing Ghassan Abu Ghadda while he was performing illegal exchange activity at the unlicensed Al Nayal office in Aleppo. The ministry confiscated large amounts of foreign currencies and Syrian pounds. The ministry also detained Jibrail Mikhail Metias for carrying out similar illegal activity in his shop of clothes in Latakia. Prime Minister Dr. Wael Halaki has approved the Economic Committee's recommendation, which includes assigning the available production capacity of cotton establishment gains for the public sector. On the other hand, the manager of the Botanic Oil Company in Hama Governorate said that this approval provides the company with the necessary raw materials, which ensure continuing the production process, in addition to supplying the local markets and citizens with the cotton oil in affordable prices. The Minister of Economy asserted that the Ministry seeks activating the exchange principle. Underlying the Ministry's efforts to overcome the obstacles that face this exchange process. On the other hand, the Deputy Minister of Economy has denied the reports concerning the instructions or draft laws related to importing used cars, indicating that the Ministry is working on importing new ones. In Latakia Governorate, the Rural Development Project has implemented many development programs like mountains areas to be transformed into agricultural lands as well as developing the rural women and supporting the livestock resources in addition to granting specialized loans. Moreover, the manager of the project said that the project aims at improving the living conditions in the rural areas. U.S. crude oil swung between gains and losses near the lowest price in more than four months amid speculation that the crude intervention, sorry, inventories increased for a seventh week in the U.S., the world's biggest oil consumer. Futures fluctuated after raising one cent yesterday from the lowest close since June. Brent for December settlement slid three cents to reach 106 U.S. dollars a barrel. European stocks fell from a five-year high as the European Union trimmed its growth outlook. U.S. index futures also slid, while Asian shares were little changed. Gold climbed, snapping five days of losses before U.S. reports that may show slower economic growth and a smaller increase in the employment, hurting expectations that the Federal Reserve will move to pair stimulus. Gold for delivery in December rose 0.3 percent to reach 1,318 U.S. dollars an ounce. The euro fell to a three-week low versus the yen, as traders weighed the prospects for additional monetary stimulus in the region before the European Central Bank meets in two days. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching and Happy New Year for the Islam.